Hey everybody, today I am in Noblesville, although where I'm standing, you may not have a clue as to where you are. This road that I'm on right here, this is 181st Street, there's not much to it, but then right over here, actually Promise Road, and Promise Road goes pretty far south, so we're at 181st Street, it goes pretty far south down in through Noblesville and on into Fisher. So we're gonna talk about rural Noblesville in this video just a little bit and how it might feel that way, but probably isn't really that way, so stay tuned. Hey everybody, I'm Jason Compton with the Compton Home Group. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is to know about living in Noblesville, Indiana, or what feels like rural Noblesville, Indiana, or Fishers, Carmel, Indianapolis, Greenwood, Avon, Plainfield, Brownsburg, any of those cities and towns surrounding Indianapolis, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also tap the little bell so you're notified every time we do a new video. Now we have people reaching out to us from all over the country with questions about places like Noblesville, Indiana, and of course, Indianapolis, Indiana. If you've got questions at all about Indy or any of the cities and towns surrounding Indianapolis, then make sure you reach out any way that you know how. We'll always have your back with those questions, and we'll certainly have your back when it comes time for you to make your move to the Indy Metro. Okay, so again, I am in Noblesville, and as I said, it's not gonna feel like it. The car actually just went past me here on 181st Street. Not a very busy road at all, but Promise over here, is fairly busy. There are definitely some cars moving up and down that. It's definitely not a street I would just close my eyes and walk across. I'm certainly gonna look both ways on it. But one of the knocks, I guess, I don't know if it's a knocker or not really against Noblesville in people's minds. Opinions about cities and towns are just all so incredibly subjective for the most part. Some cities and towns really match a person, other cities and towns don't. So if I'm talking up a place about Indianapolis or around Indianapolis or Indianapolis itself, I get people a lot. They ask me, well, why don't you live there? Well, geographically, it just doesn't work for me. The Indy Metro is a big place. So if I were to travel from here all the way to the airport, let's say, on the southwest side of Indianapolis, it's gonna take me 45, 50 minutes from here to get there. If I had to travel a lot, this is not a good place. If you work for FedEx, or you're a pilot, or you're a flight attendant, or you work at the airport in TSA or something like that, well, you probably wanna be closer to the airport. So geographically, it doesn't work. For my family, we have to live over to the east side of Indianapolis. And for my wife's job, our kids' school, and my work is just kind of all over the place, obviously. So for this channel and what I do in real estate, I'm all over the metro. So it kinda doesn't matter where I live, but I would absolutely live in this place, in Noblesville, if I had a chance to. I would have no problem with it. Now, that's my opinion, other people maybe not. And this is one of the reasons why some people do want to live in Noblesville and why some people don't want to live in Noblesville. So this particular area right here, it's farmland, but it's for sale. So if it's sold, it's probably going to turn into a development of some kind. Whether that's good or bad, that's a matter of opinion, but there will likely be houses on these pieces of property at some point. And if you're out here, you have a brand new house out here on this field, and you're way up at 181st Street. You can go further north than this in Noblesville though, you definitely can. Is it going to feel very rural? And if you go further east from here, because not far from here, we've got a State Road 37, which goes down into Fishers, it merges with I-69, and then goes down into Indianapolis, turns into Bidford Boulevard. Tons of commercial right along 37, tons. So, I mean, everything that you could possibly imagine. In fact, from where I'm standing, even though this looks terribly rural, if I put in, just Home Depot is four minutes from here, four minute drive. I mean, it is just over that way, super, super close. So you could get a place like this, be in a house or a neighborhood and think, oh, I live out in the country or this feels very rural. Or if you were out of town, say you lived in a different state and you come to Noblesville and you go to a housing addition or a neighborhood of some kind that has homes in it, and especially east of here, and this is what surrounds you, you might think, uh, it doesn't really look like there's enough of what I need on a daily basis close by. This is too rural for me. Well, if it's stuff that you need on a daily basis, like that Home Depot, and where there's a Home Depot, you've got everything else. You've got grocery stores, you've got your Starbucks, you've got all kinds of different restaurants. You, of course, are gonna have different shops nearby, of all kinds of varieties. I mean, you name it, it probably is close by. Home Depot's not gonna put a store in a completely remote location where nobody's gonna be. They're always gonna be in a center where you're gonna have a lot of people around. In fact, just down the street from the Home Depot is a Lowe's, and then just down the street from that is a Meyer. 
and a Walmart and huge places, I mean, super centers. So they have lots and lots of people around. But you might get into a place in Noblesville like this and think, I don't see anything. I'm not really all that sure that I'm close to what I'm gonna need. Is it gonna take me 30 minutes to get someplace? So if you live truly out in the country and you go home, let's say on a Friday, you might have to think, what do I need for the weekend? Because it's a 30 minute drive at least to the nearest grocery store or the nearest Home Depot or the nearest whatever it is you might need. So I don't wanna go out on Saturday to get it or out on Sunday or out multiple times to get it. So I'm gonna get it on Friday before I go home. Anywhere you live in Noblesville, anywhere, it isn't gonna be remotely close to something like that. You can absolutely find neighborhoods that are older in Noblesville and a lot of those older neighborhoods are gonna be closer to the center of Noblesville and closer to the downtown area of Noblesville which isn't too terribly far from here, just over to the west. State Road 32 will take right through downtown Noblesville. Super cool little place. Noblesville is actually the county seat for Hamilton County, so the county courthouse is there. Lots of little shops and restaurants right around the square. Awesome little place. I am a huge fan of downtown Noblesville. I really like the vibe there. Anytime I have a chance to get in there, I definitely like going. If you want an older home, you probably are gonna be a little bit closer to the center of Noblesville. But once you start to get to newer home, and I'm not talking brand new necessarily, but it could be 90s, 2000s, and then of course you get into the brand new homes. Some of their locations will look like this. It will look like it's very rural. It will look like it's out there. It will look like I have to think on a Friday what I need for the weekend because I'm not gonna drive 30 minutes on Saturday afternoon if I need one thing that I'm cooking for dinner. I needed cheese or I needed bread or whatever it is that you cook. I don't wanna have to run out and get that. So I gotta make my list and get it before I go home. No place in Noblesville is going to be like that. You cannot get far enough away and still have a Noblesville address to have any remote chance of something like that happening. You're always going to be close to a center, a place where you have commercial activity. So if you live in this area, you've got 37 and you've got everything along 37. Now, if you go further east of here and you stay north of Fishers, of course, you gotta stay north of Fishers to be in Noblesville, but then you start getting out towards I-69, because I-69 and 37, they part ways, they split back in Fishers and coming up around through Noblesville. But you get over that way, and you've got a lot of Fishers over there too, East Fishers, and a lot of what East Fishers has to offer, if like if you go up and down Oleo Road, you're gonna have tons of commercial there with a Kroger, a huge, that is a giant Kroger over there, huge Kroger grocery store, and then a lot of commercial surrounding that. But then you get up to the, further to the north, and along 146th Street, and you're gonna find Hamilton Town Center. Hamilton Town Center is one of the biggest outdoor malls that you're gonna have in the whole area. You've got Perry Crossing down in Plainfield. That's really big. You've got Clay Terrace over in Carmel, and then you've got Hamilton Town Center here, which is very, very large. And you get over to Ruoff Home Mortgage Center, a music center, which used to be, years ago, really quite rural. I remember going to concerts in the 90s there before I even lived in Indianapolis. And we're talking early 90s, like 1990, 91, when it was called Deer Creek. And it was out in the sticks. It was out in the cornfields. And getting there was goofy. Getting out at night, especially when the concert ended with thousands of others, that was confusing and difficult to get out. Now, all the development has come up very very close to it and it doesn't feel like it's out there anymore because it's not out there anymore it is not rural like it used to be you have to get into the rural parts Boy, rural is hard to say a lot of times to get into those parts you got to go really far north and really far to the east to really get there and it's just not that far out there anymore I used to ride a lot of miles on bikes and that's exactly where we would go ride we would leave a friend's house we would go out there's another car only two cars since I've been on this road. Not a busy road. We would leave his house, which is in Fishers, go to the north, go to the east, through Noblesville, and get out that way past Ruoff, because it's all country roads. And for the most part, it still is, but it looks very different now than it did 20 years ago. Those are country roads. They're small roads, narrow roads, let's say, just two lane roads, but there are houses, there's development out there now. And of course that means there's a lot more traffic. So if I were to ride bikes a whole lot, that may not be exactly the place I would do it anymore. If I did it, you'd have to be exceptionally careful. There's a lot more cars than what there used to be. But if you live out that way, it still does have that rural look. You can get a lot of places that look a lot like this, like you are out in the farms and the fields. And honestly, I kind of like that look because it makes it feel more spacious and open and not so crowded. But a lot of people don't. A lot of people hate that look. They don't want that at all. They don't want to feel like they're out in the sticks, even though you're not again. They don't want to feel like that. Again, that's a whole subjective, 
a whole other topic of discussion for an individual and what they particularly like. But if you come out here, I wouldn't just write it off. Nope, it's two rules, too far out, probably not. Pop into your maps like I just did with Home Depot, it's four minutes from here. Put in a Kroger, might be six minutes. Put in a Lowe's or a Walmart or something like that, it's likely to be under 10 minutes. Almost, almost, this isn't perfect, but almost from just about anywhere you live in Noblesville. So if you have questions about any other location in Noblesville and how it might feel and you want to discuss it some, if it might be an option for you, reach out any way that you know how. And until the next one, we'll see you later.